Welcome back to Switch to Linux. So today we're going to tackle one of those little problems that will prevent many people from moving over to the Linux system. And that's that you already have some programs on Windows that you'd rather not lose. And so we're gonna talk about that a little bit today. Now the first thing is, look to see if there is an alternative to the program that you are looking for. For example, if you are using Microsoft Office and you're not so absolutely tied to have to have Office, look at LibreOffice. They're not gonna push you into subscription models or steal your data or whatever else. Now, if you are using an Office 365, which is more of a cloud-based platform, you can use any existing web browser and continue using that type of program. And there's where moving to Linux makes a lot more sense in the modern movement of switching over to cloud-based applications. It makes a lot of sense. So, the... Uh, but there are certainly some programs that, that you do not want an alternative to. For example, some of the old games that you might run. So in this case, uh, what I have done is I have installed um, some of my favorite games uh, that I used to play. So if you look at my uh, launcher over here under my, my image, you'll see that I actually have Warcraft 3 installed. And this will run just fine, thank you. Um, some Windows programs will work well under, under Linux and some of them will not. It kind of depends upon each individual program, how it was designed and, and whatnot. So you can see here that Warcraft works just fine. Um, I can get online with it. I can do whatever. Anytime I'm done running it, I get this guy here. It's just a, you know, get rid of it. We don't need to worry about that. Um, but that brings us to how do you run Windows programs? Well, you need an application called Wine. Wine actually stands for, uh, originally it was, Wine is not an emulator. And what the Wine was able to do is it was able to uh, emulate, uh, not, not emulate, duh, can't use that word, <laughs> but it was a compatibility layer that allows DLL and EXE files to run on a Linux platform. Now, the couple disadvantages of having Wine installed straight up on your system. The first is that if Wine is on the system, it could actually mean that a virus could run on the system as well. If you, any EL, uh, EXE or DLL file or, or any other type of Windows system file can freely run, then we have an issue. The second is Wine will get upgraded on package upgrades, and sometimes the various versions of Wine are incompatible with various programs. So on my, my main Linux computer over here, um, I have run an in, into an issue where, um, uh, where the, uh, the Wine version upgraded and it fixed a problem I had where occasionally about 10% of the time the keyboard wouldn't capture, but now the panel will not disappear. So if I just auto hide the panel before playing the game, it resolves the problem. But if I can easily go back to a previous version of Wine, I might rather deal with the keyboard not working. Or maybe another version of Wine had no problems whatsoever. And that brings us to the second and probably the better way of running a Windows-based program is to use an application called Play on Linux. Now, Play on Linux allows you to create some virtualizations around Wine but it has a couple major advantages. First, it does not allow the EXE and DLL files to run rampant on your system. And secondly, you can select whatever Wine version works best for any of your programs. So on a traditional Wine install, whatever Wine program you have has to work with each of the programs that you, that you have working. So uh, without further ado, what we're going to do is install a Windows program. So as I was working on my Ubuntu computer, I installed Windows 98 on it from my one of my original OEM computers. And I wanted to rebuild my applications as I had it, but I could not find a program. And I was digging through my deep dark closet back behind me and I found it. This is the original 1997 Worms 2. And we're going to install this. Now, I will give you a brief warning that this program, because of limitations of how this program was written in 1997, there are a few issues. Primarily, this will not run full screen on 
Linux. Um, actually, I'm not even sure it'll run full screen on Windows either if I try to install it on a Windows computer. Maybe I'll do that tonight. I'll install it on Windows 8 and see if it runs well over there. Uh, the problem I was getting is it would tell me input not supported. It's pushing out too low of a resolution. So we're gonna we're gonna work work around that. We'll be able to play a copy of Worms inside of a virtual uh, virtual window. So without further ado, uh, I'm gonna plug the disk in here to my CD drive. <clears throat> okay, so that's in there. Now the first step that you want to do when you're installing any Windows program is you want to go to winehq.org, which is the main wine place, uh, main wine website, and you want to type in Worms2, uh, whatever the program is you're looking to install, and see how it runs. Some programs like Worms2 will actually run pretty good. And other than my window issue, which actually has more to do with my screen resolution than the computer itself, uh, you'll see here that uh, it seems to be working just fine. Okay, Platinum is what it says, just fine. Now, if I go in and I look for like Photoshop or something, some versions of Photoshop work just fine and some of them do not work well at all. And so you can tell that by looking at this. So here the um, rating will run either from garbage like CS2, uh, or version 3, all the way up to Platinum, like the 5LE. And then some of them will run pretty good, like the Creative Cloud um, uh, 14. Uh, there's a Creative Cloud uh, 15. And CS4 is the version I have, which is supposed to run pretty well. The problem is the installer doesn't work, and so I can't really test this out. And I'm not, you know... I'm good enough with GIMP, I don't need to run around and try and figure out how to get Photoshop to work, quite honestly. So anyway, I can see here that with Wine version 1.7.23, uh, this works. Now this computer has 1.7.37, I think, installed, it doesn't work. Um, I've already tested this out. Um, the latest ones work, in fact, I even have one of the release candidates installed on the computer, um, and that actually seems to work just fine, so we'll probably use that. So what we're going to do here is we're going to boot up uh, Play on Linux. So I just need to come over to my, um, to my application launcher. For some reason, my application launcher start menu wasn't wanting to work. That might have to do with the fact I'm running dual monitors and all sorts of other stuff right now. So um, over here under Games, hit Play on Linux. And now we will see my Play on Linux screen. All right, so what we're going to do is we are going to install a program. So we'll hit install here. And then what we're going to do is on, on many cases, you can come over here and look if the application already, uh, already has a configuration. What these are is not necessarily installs, um, but what these are is uh, what is known by the community to be a working Setup. So some games would require DirectX or other programs to be installed. And so uh, what we're doing here is we're just going to come in and we're going to uh, look at various um, programs and see if this is on the list. And it's not. I've already come in here and looked. Uh, what is on here that is very similar, in fact, the patches are much the same, is the Worms. I think it's called Worms World at War. Worms uh, World Party, that's it. Um, so this guy here um, is very similar, but I'm not going to mess with that. I'm just going to install a non-listed program. <clears throat> and then what this is going to do is ask us to install. Uh, first, we're going to set up the, the virtual disk that it's going to use. So we're going to install the program on a new virtual drive. And then we're going to type in the name of the drive. So we're going to use another version, and I know we're going to have to configure Wine here. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Now it asks us which one would we like to use. I know that 1.7.37 does not seem to work. I did not test 1.3.24. I know that 1.9.20 and the 2.0 release candidate 3 both do work. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and choose this one here. Since this was written for Windows 95, we are going to install the 32-bit edition. 
And then now we're going to configure our box. While that's doing that, I need to fix the grub loader. I did a uh, package upgrade on a on my um, uh, ultra secure uh, banking system and um, walked away from the computer for a little bit. And I guess it auto configured my grub loader to mess up my system. So. All right, so here it's waiting for me now, I'm sorry. Um, so we wanna select which Windows version, XP is just fine. And then I'm gonna come over here under graphics and I'm gonna emulate this. And 800 by 600 is gonna work just fine for what we need. So we're going to hit apply, push okay. And then now it's going to start looking for runnable CD-ROMs. It detects the CD-ROM in here. And so we're gonna hit next. And then here, you'll generally get this guy here if the thing loads or not. In fact, it even tells you if your program is running, just ignore this message. We're just going to ignore the message. So over here, we hit our uh, install button on our worms. And then now we're going to install the application. So it's running in the 800 by 600 uh, screen size that I told it to emulate. And I wanted it to do that just because uh, if we let it do its own thing, we'll get some kind of inconsistent results here. So now we're gonna let that install. So the limitations that we have on this primarily is that when they uh, built the original program, they never counted for screen resolutions like 1080p, which is what I'm running. And um, so there is actually somebody who wrote a script to fix it and allow you to run full screen, but that requires getting the patch to upgrade the, uh, the program. I could not find the patch, even the program or the, the company that makes the program says that they have the patch to install it couldn't find it. So um, we're going to um, just kind of let it do its thing and I'll show you what it looks like running on a small window and then off camera I'll work on getting this fixed. Okay, we're gonna finish. We're gonna register later. And then now we can go ahead and play the game. I'm not gonna play the game yet. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to, um, uh, how to get in and change all the configurations and then we're gonna boot this up and play around. Go ahead and cancel this guy. So now inside of our system here, haha, ah, goody. Right there live on video, I just fixed a boot manager on a computer. Booyah. All right, so what we're gonna do here is I wanna come over to this main window, hit configure, and then this is going to allow us to select the drive. So here's my Warcraft drives. This is my one that didn't work before. Um, so over here, I can change my wine version here. If I want to install a wine version that is not listed, I can click on this button and that will allow me to install a different wine version. Okay, over here, if I need to make any of the configurations, I can click on this button. It's gonna open up a window, which will allow us to configure any of our wine settings that we wanna change. So you'll see we have a little virtual desktop here. So everything is still looking like I want it. Anytime you make any changing changes in here, go ahead and hit the Windows Reboot. Um, I'm actually gonna to check to see if, um, see if there's something in the registry uh, editor here that will, um, uh, let's see. Huh, I am at version one. Yep. Yep. I was looking to see if there's anything in here that would allow me to um, change the, uh, the resolution for the game itself. Um, if it exists, I'll hunt for it a little bit later and uh, see if I can find it. Let me just do... DX patch to allow path. Okay. 
That's not going to be anything. Okay. So, nope, not going to find anything in there. I think I just need to, to track down that patch um, to figure out where, where that is. All right, um, over here, if you are installing some something that needs some other type of thing, like maybe Microsoft Core Fonts or DirectX, uh, some particular version of DirectX, um, then you can actually get in here and uh, do that. Look at that, I can install Internet Explorer 6. I'm all over that. The world's most hackable program, I think people said. <laughs> so I can come in here, I can install any of these. Um, you can also go online and find some other things. And there's other settings here. If you need to access the directory, it's over there. So what we are going to do is come back to the main general and push, make a new shortcut from the virtual drive. This is going to scan the drive for all the various programs that it finds. And as it does that, it's going to um, give us a list of everything that it finds. So. The front end on this particular program, the front end is the actual uh, program that's going to launch Worms 2. There is a Worms 2 here. This goes right into a game configuration, which will crash unless you've run front end once. And if you have run front end once, Worms 2 will always execute the most recent front end launched. So we're going to launch front end, but I do want to change the title of it to be Worms 2. It's going to go ahead and create my shortcut for that and then it's going to ask me if I want to create another one. I'm going to come up here, write I do not want to make another shortcut. You will want to if there's multiple programs that you'd like to create a shortcut to. Okay, so we're going to close that and now you can see that we have Worms 2. So now I can click on this, push play. and then it should load up our application. And I'm gonna turn down the speakers a little bit. You'll still be able to hear it, but um, in this case here, it won't be quite as loud. So here, we're gonna come over here, create a new team. If you are familiar with this game, typing in Team 17 Micropros is a cheat to give you all of the weapons. Uh, I want to be some rednecks. A redneck worm. I'm gonna come over here, create a random, and let's make these guys Yorkshires. Okay, hit accept. Let's go ahead and change the tree. Let's well, let's go to hell. Why not? Um, brown water. Weapons editor. So here under the weapons editor, you can actually um, make some changes. I like making my own. Um, so there's just a few things that I like to do if I can remember how to do them all. Uh, maybe I won't even bother messing with them. Let me just make make one little change that I like to do. Actually, there's two little changes I like to do. Homing strike. Um, let's see. I love turning the homing strike all the way up. It's like my most favorite thing in the world to do. Of course, one of these I don't want to do. Um, I forget which one. I think it's this one. I think that one's kind of crazy, <laughs> turning that up. And then the other thing I like to change is the minigun. I love making the minigun just horribly powerful. Just my favorite thing to do. Um, let's do let's do a thirty three percent bullet spread. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna save as attack. All right. Um, options editor. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that as it is. So I want weapons attack. We're just gonna go default. Now we're going to play around here. So what we're going to see is going to happen is in this, this is the limitation of the game is it's going to load into this little box here. It needs to run from the CD. So now you can see that um, I can play here. So I'm the red guys. Let's see. All right. So this is a nice ideal um, quick match. This is why I like turning up that minigun. <laughs> yeah. 
cause some mass damage there. Like I said, short match. Okay. And let me show you what that homing strike does that uh, I like so much. If I can, let's see. There's my homing strike. This is why I like setting it like this. Eh, that's not exactly the way I like to set it up. Oh, well, I'll have to work on that. Or maybe that is. I don't know. I forget. Hooray! <laughs> okay. So there you go. There's a quick game of, of worms. So once we play the game, we're going to come back over here. Let's just see if it will uh, go to something else. Let's go ahead and do cheese. Let's see. Cheese. All right. Yep. So now we'll load up our second game. Seeing if there's anybody that that can that can do the uh, uh, minigun thing without dying. I think he can probably pull it off right about here. Yep, there goes a minigun. Let's see, I'm the red guys right now. Where can I take out a couple of blue guys at? Eh, let's go ahead and drop a homing cluster right about here. Magic pull, it's not going to work well on that one. Uh, I don't think I could pull off a flying sheep either. Yeah, why not? Give up my turn on that one. See, I'm gonna hit myself if I use that guy there. Let me do let me do a flying sheep. Flying sheep is really hard to control. <laughs> <laughs> Let's end this. Ah, I should have gone a little lower on that one, huh? <laughs> yeah, I think they're both dead. I think that's a fair assessment. Yep.
<laughs> Let's end it with a mat. Uh, oh, I don't think a mat Patsy's magic bullet's gonna make it. I think I'm slightly tighter than I need to be. But let's give it a try. It's gonna. Oh yeah, <laughs> booyah! <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. So now I have Worms 2 available on um, on my computer here. Um, so what I'm going to try and do next uh, off camera here is I'm going to see if I can't find the patch, make this full screen so it's uh, a little bit more fun to play. And I also want to see if I can get it working without having to rip the, or without having to have the CD in the drive just by probably making an ISO image and seeing if I can install a uh, virtual CD drive onto this or not. I'm not sure if that's going to happen, but... Uh, we'll see what happens. I know if I was running this on a virtual box, I can actually do that easily. Um, so there's a little bit about play on Linux, how to set up and configure a Windows program on Linux. So hopefully that allows you to much more easily switch to Linux.